Hey guys, um, so let's keep going here and we'll talk now about specific fermentable carbohydrates. Um, so we have monosaccharides, which are simple sugars, and they include glucose, galactose, and fructose. So glucose is the main energy source of the body. You know, it's central to those the cellular respiration and all that good stuff. It's found in many of the foods that we eat, and it's honestly unavoidable. We can't really avoid it, and it is important. We need it for our body. So it's an important point to keep in mind for later that we can't really avoid consuming glucose. Um, now, galactose is a component of lactose, which is a disaccharide we'll talk about more in a little bit. Um, fructose, I want to talk a little bit about. It's the main sugar found in fruit, so you can see it's it's root here, fruc, uh, fruit sugar uh, found in fruit, that makes sense. It's also found in honey, corn, and root vegetables. Um, fructose itself is not harmful for teeth and not too sweet. However, when fructose is concentrated into a substance known as high fructose corn syrup, it becomes as sweet or even sweeter than sucrose and more harmful to our teeth than regular natural fructose. So uh, this is a bit of interesting history. Soda companies in the United States switched over from sucrose to high fructose corn syrup in the 1980s because it's cheaper and easier to blend. But even though high fructose corn syrup may be less healthy overall, sucrose is still the worst for your teeth, which we'll see why in a little bit. All right, then we also have disaccharides. They're two simple sugars linked together. Sucrose is glucose and fructose. Lactose is glucose and galactose. And maltose is two glucoses. Now, um, strep mutans has an enzyme called invertase, which is basically sucrase, which can break down sucrose into its components, glucose and fructose, and then easily process this by gluc glycolysis and fermentation. Um, sucrose is actually by far the worst for caries because it not only does it contribute to acid production, but remember how strep mutans can use sucrose to make sticky glucan? Well, strep mutans converts sucrose into this glue that holds plaque onto our teeth and makes it much more difficult to remove with brushing. It also pr uh, provides an energy store, an intracellular polysaccharide, for bacteria that they can use later. And sucrose is the sweetest sugar and found in most candy, also referred to as cane sugar or table sugar. So this is by far the, the worst one for um, dental cavities. Lactose is interesting in that not all bacteria can ferment it. You know, when a person is lactose intolerant, they can consume lactose, but they can't process it or they can't digest it because they lack the lactase enzyme required to do so. Similarly, some bacteria lack the enzymes to produce lactose. However, most oral bacteria have adapted to process lactose and it can be fermented by oral bacteria. It can be, that's important. The good news is that it actually is the least likely to break down in the mouth. And if you look at studies that compare um, the pH of plaque after sucrose consumption versus lactose consumption. Sucrose you can get down to about anywhere from 4.5 to 5.5. Lactose you get down to a pH of about 6. Um, and so it would be relatively the best of these sugars if we had to pick one. Also, dairy like milk and cheese that contain lactose have calcium that can help remineralize the tooth like we talked about before. So those, those things are actually um, good for teeth uh, overall. Now maltose is the sugar found in most grains like rice, pasta, and bread. Um, it doesn't taste sweet, so it can trick us to think that it might not be harming our teeth. And that's why it's important to brush after every meal, even if we didn't eat anything that tasted particularly quote unquote sweet. And finally, starch is a complex carbohydrate that consists of a long polymer uh, chain of glucoses. It can also contribute as fuel, 
but not quite as readily processed. Um, first, we have salivary amylase, an enzyme in our, in our saliva that would break down starch, and then bacteria can process the individual glucoses, like we talked about before. So this is a pretty cool um, summary slide to look at all the different sugars and to think about how each one plays into our daily lives in terms of diet. But remember, it's not the sugar that causes decay in and of itself, but it's the acid that bacteria produce from these sugars that is the culprit. So there's also a positive feedback loop to keep in mind. Eating lots of sugar produces more acid, which favors the acid-tolerant bacteria, which in turn produce more acid. So therefore, a sugar-rich diet can actually induce in an ecological shift in the plaque microflora. That's pretty crazy. Um, so this is a kind of uh, cool thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about how dynamic our mouth is in terms of the bacteria that live there. So you might be wondering, well, what about sugar replacements? You know, and you might be onto something with that. Uh, sugar alcohols are actually not well utilized by oral bacteria. So what does that mean? Well, xylitol is essentially non-fermentable by oral bacteria. It's brought into the cell. It's attempted, uh, the bacteria attempts to metabolize it and then spits it back out, wasting energy of the bacteria and not giving the cell any energy in return. Also, like anything we eat, these sugar alcohols like xylitol, erythritol, and sorbitol will increase salivary production, saliva production, and thus help favor remineralization if we think back to our equilibrium equation. And xylitol inhibits growth of strep mutans by that wasting energy mechanism that I just mentioned. Now, how about um, things that you can like add to your coffee, like these quote-unquote artificial sweeteners? Um, they're also interesting to think about because are they really fermentable? Well, not really. Um, there's an ongoing controversy about um, aspartame, which is interesting. Just look it up on Google, and you're, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, there's a ton of ongoing research with all of these things, but the vast majority of information out there will say that bacteria, you know, like pe some people are lactose intolerant, are just unable to process these sugar alternatives, and thus uh, these things uh, cannot be converted to, into acids by oral bacteria, and thus are non-cariogenic. So that's pretty cool. Now, if we go back to our equation here, our big three, it's virtually impossible to control for sugar like we talked about, it's just impossible to avoid. It's virtually impossible to eliminate the cariogenic bacteria. So that's why dentists care so much about plaque. This is what dentists can target. This is what patients can target in preventive treatment and why dentists stress so much the proper oral hygiene because we can control this. We can't control these two things but we can control plaque. We can mechanically disrupt plaque. Um, we, can, we can change that thin microscopic layer on teeth. And that's why it's so important to brush at least twice a day, to go to the dentist and get a professional cleaning done twice a year. Because if we can mechanically disrupt the biofilm and do it consistently, then we don't even have to worry about these things. We don't have to worry about these things because we can prevent cavities from forming by tackling the equation at this spot. So that's pretty cool. That was like my punchline of the series. So hopefully I hyped that up okay. Um, if you're brushing after each meal and taking care of that biofilm and using fluoride to build up tooth defense, it doesn't matter how much bacteria you have and what you eat, cavities won't form. So guys, that's it. That's the science of cavities and how it relates to our daily life. I hope you found that helpful. I thought it was really interesting. Hopefully you're not bored. Um, if you watch this all the way to the end, 
Thanks so much. Leave a like on this video. Comment. Let me know what you want to hear next. Um, any topics you might be interested in, I'll be happy to check them out for you. Um, again, thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, and I'll see you all next time.